The film commences with a knock at the door, signaling the arrival of a police officer in search of someone. Mitch, the homeowner, graciously invites the officer, Eric, inside. Eric, holding a plate of pie, presents it to Amanda, the mistress of the house. Several friends have gathered already, marking the occasion of Thanksgiving dinner. Jess, Thomas's daughter, stands out in her casual attire amidst the more formally dressed guests, a fact that Kathleen, one of the attendees, disdainfully remarks upon, much to Jess's silent chagrin. Jess, preferring her laid-back style, harbors a dislike for Kathleen, the reasons behind which will unfold later. Meanwhile, Thomas, the proprietor of a supermarket famously closed on Black Friday, arrives and takes his place at the dinner table. Kathleen, Thomas's new fiancé and Jess's prospective stepmother, proposes keeping the store open on Black Friday to distribute items, a suggestion met with mixed feelings. As Amanda presents the turkey, she calls upon Mitch to carve it, only to learn that he won't be able to join them due to pressing promotional commitments at the store. Meanwhile, a bustling throng converges upon the store, vying for coveted spots in the front row, as rumors swirl that it will open its doors in a mere 10 minutes. The allure of Black Friday promotions has drawn droves of townsfolk, igniting a palpable buzz of excitement. The manager, beholding the swelling crowd, brims with anticipation for the impending sales bonanza. Elsewhere, Jess finds solace in the company of Bobby, her boyfriend, lamenting the void left by Kathleen's assumption of her mother's role. Her father's swift relocation to the house he purchased from Kathleen, shortly after her arrival, and their subsequent engagement, unfold without Jess's blessing. Simultaneously, Jess and Bobby's companions pull up outside, signaling their arrival. Intent on a movie night, their journey detours to Jess's father's store, spurred by a friend's desire for a Black Friday phone deal. Enthralled by the prospect of free items within five minutes of entry, the group eagerly ventures inside. As they rush towards the store, Bobby's former high school baseball stardom attracts the attention of a fan, momentarily delaying their progress. Meanwhile, Ryan, Jess's ex-boyfriend, spots her standing alone and extends an invitation to his party. Despite her polite refusals, Ryan persists, much to Bobby's growing rage, who intervenes, keenly aware of Ryan's past involvement with Jess. Amanda arrives with dinner for her husband, the store manager, Eric by her side. Witnessing the agitated crowd, both are visibly concerned. Meanwhile, Jess and her friends enter the store, unbeknownst to the angry outsiders who mistakenly rush in before them. Jess and her friend find their way to the back and enter the central area, where they start exploring items. Outside, chaos ensues as the crowd grows more impatient. The manager urgently instructs security to lock the doors, and an officer announces the store will open in 10 minutes. Despite efforts, the manager struggles to control the surging crowd, which eventually reaches the main glass door. Jess's friend, Scuba, notices the people banging on the door and instructs security to open it. One security officer flees the scene, unable to handle the escalating situation. Suddenly, the glass door cracks, and the crowd rushes inside, unintentionally knocking Amanda to the floor in the commotion. Evan starts recording the scene where people are pushing and fighting to grab free items in the store. Security cameras capture everything. Suddenly, Bobby notices a security person still alive and tries to crawl towards him to help. Unfortunately, someone crushes Bobby's hand and twists it severely. Meanwhile, a woman viciously hits Amanda with a shopping trolley, causing her death. In a desperate attempt to stop the chaos, Eric pulls the trigger. A year later, someone watches the Black Friday video on a laptop, prompting a news reporter to interview the families of the victims. Amanda's husband expresses concern about the inadequate security personnel that day. On Bobby's side, he's now unable to play his favorite game due to his injury. Amanda's husband contradicts the store owner's claim of having no CCTV footage of the incident during the interview. In the next scene, two policemen visit a restaurant owned by a woman named Lizzie. It's revealed that Lizzie was responsible for Amanda's death in the store, using a trolley to carry out the fatal act. The sheriff mentions a popular John Carver mask, widely bought in the city for the Thanksgiving parade. On another front, an unidentified individual keeps tagging Jess and her friends daily in Evan's video from last year's store incident, causing constant disturbance. They're in the dark about the culprit's identity. Jess mistakenly accuses Evan of posting the video, leading to his denial and frustration. Later, Jess finds herself shooting a family commercial with her father, Thomas, where she must deliver a speech. Suddenly, Thomas erupts in anger upon discovering the cabin for the shoot vandalized. Despite Jess's frustration at Thomas for ignoring last year's events, he insists on shooting the commercial for store publicity. Meanwhile, Bobby cuts off communication with Jess, leaving her feeling abandoned. Conversely, Ryan is delighted that Jess is dating him. Ryan's friend, Jacob, distributes pamphlets for his party, but Jess and her friends decline due to the $25 entrance fee. They receive a mysterious picture message showing everyone's names on a dinner table. 
Soon, Ryan joins them, announcing passes for a game. However, their attention shifts when they notice a masked man staring at Jess, who vanishes suddenly. Later, someone inexplicably watches Lizzie's YouTube channel. That same night, as Lizzie closes the restaurant, she spots the mask on the counter and throws it in the bin. Suddenly, she's attacked, her head banged into the cold storage, resulting in facial and finger injuries. Desperately, she locks herself in a room, attempting to unlock her phone for help, but her injured fingers impede her efforts. Unable to find her car keys, she's startled as the car starts behind her, leading to her demise. The killer hangs her lower torso at the board of the nearby Mar shopping complex. Meanwhile, Evan enters college, where they receive a picture of the murdered woman hanging from the complex. Jess confides in her father about the incident, who promises additional security for their safety. The police summon Jess and her friends to the station to identify the victim, but they are unable to recognize her. On her way out of the station, Jess encounters Bobby, who apologizes for ghosting her all year. Learning of her predicament, Jess seeks Bobby's help to retrieve CCTV footage from her father's computer. Bobby also reveals his decision to undergo rehab to resume playing soon. As they prepare to bid farewell, Ryan arrives, sparking annoyance in Bobby, who nonetheless departs with Jess for the police station. Meanwhile, the security guard who fled the scene that fateful day fears for his life and plans to leave for Cuba. However, he panics upon realizing his passport is missing, only to encounter the mask on the table. Suddenly, he's attacked with an axe, decapitated, and his head placed on the table with his name tag. The killer sends a photo of the grisly scene to Jess and her friends, underscoring his cunning. The police recognize the killer's meticulousness in leaving no trace behind. Meanwhile, Jess discovers footage on her father's computer showing Ryan meeting a security guard at the mall, which she records onto her pen drive. Her father arrives, apologizing for neglecting her after his engagement to Kathleen. Bobby and Jess print pictures from the video, prompting Eric to warn them about Ryan's connection to the deceased security guard and urge caution around him. Evan, feeling uneasy, reads the essay Jacob wrote for him, only to discover it was copied from the teacher's blog, leading to embarrassment. Together, they brainstorm potential murder suspects, casting suspicion on everyone, including Robin, Bobby, and Mitch. Meanwhile, Ryan calls Jess, who doesn't answer while at school. Later, a mysterious girl, lures Lonnie from the back door, and John Carver kills him from behind, strategically placing knives below the jumping ramp. The police advise Jess to stay home during the investigation. Anxiously waiting for Evan and his girlfriend to return from the game, she texts them but receives no response. At school, someone attacks Evan and Gabby in the corridor. Concerned, Jess searches for them, finding Gabby's phone in a cart. As she stands up after retrieving the phone, John Carver attacks her with an axe. Jess dodges the attack, hides, and cleverly blends among the mannequins. The masked man opens the room to search for her, but she deftly conceals herself. Seizing an opportunity, Jess grabs a knife and a spray bottle, accidentally causing the bottle to fall. She sprays the masked man's face and makes a swift escape. Unfortunately, Jess couldn't gather any useful information to share with the police about the killer. Meanwhile, Ryan and Bobby arrive, inciting Bobby's anger, leading to a heated confrontation about Ryan's dubious relationship with the security guard. Jess intervenes, making it clear they don't want to see either of them. Julia's father arrives and takes her to Florida for safety, while Scuba persuades Jess to attend Jacob's party, believing they're unsafe elsewhere. McCarty gives Scuba a gun for protection, but Jess declines to carry any weapons. On their way home, Scuba talks to Julia about her departure for Florida. Suddenly, John Carver murders the guard in Julia's room. She tries to call her dad, but he doesn't answer. Upon investigating, she finds her father downstairs, where he, too, meets a grisly end at the hands of John Carver. Julia calls Scuba again, but John Carver cruelly ends her life by inserting pins into her ears. Jess and Scuba rush to Julia's house upon hearing her screams, but they're too late. John Carver uses Julia as a shield, rendering Scuba's gun ineffective. As the killer flees, Julia succumbs to her injuries on the floor. After the incident, Kathleen unjustly blames Jess and her friends, prompting Thomas to decide against opening the store for this year's Thanksgiving. During the Thanksgiving parade, the police strategically position Thomas's family on the street as bait to lure out the killer, surrounded by heavy police presence. The parade proceeds as planned until Mitch, Amanda's husband, unveils a banner, triggering memories of last year's tragedy. Suddenly, the attacker strikes, targeting random people in the parade. Jess, her family, and Scuba, seeking safety in a car, are not spared. The masked assailant detonates a bomb in the crowd and shoots tranquilizer arrows into Thomas, Jess, and Scuba, rendering them unconscious. The masked figure then drives the car away from the chaos. At the masked man's house, he prepares a sinister concoction, brushing Kathleen's body with syrup before sprinkling salt, 
pepper, and coriander over her. Turning on the heat, he intends Kathleen to be the Thanksgiving dinner for them all. In his haste, he forgets the mask near the oven, inadvertently burning it slightly. Jess and Julia, hiding, evade the masked killer's search. Meanwhile, Kathleen escapes upstairs and discovers a girl in the fridge. Seizing a bottle, she shuts it again and hides behind the door. However, the masked man discovers her hiding spot and strikes her with a pointed shovel. Kathleen flees outside, but the killer impales her with the shovel and immolates her in the oven. The media captures public outrage, while the police receive another picture of the masked killer. Jess, Julia, and Scuba find themselves tied at a dining table as the police arrive. The killer begins broadcasting, serving Kathleen's charred body and wielding a hammer against Evan, blaming him for recording the viral video at the shopping complex. In a desperate bid for survival, Jess frees herself and retaliates, chopping off a piece of Kathleen's body to serve to the others, ending the masked killer's reign of terror. Unexpectedly, Scuba lunges at the assailant, attempting to stop them. Jess chases after the assailant, but they manage to escape. Returning to the road, Jess finds Eric's lifeless body. She takes his gun and bravely enters the killer's house, only to be shocked to discover that the killer is Bobby. Despite Eric's attempt to catch him, Bobby flees. The police begin searching, while Thomas, Scuba, and Gabby are still in the hospital. At the police station, Eric hurts Jess, so she needs to sit down before leaving. Eric steps outside to give Jess some space before returning to the room. Suddenly, Jess realizes that Eric is wearing the same shoes as the killer, finally recognizing him. Eric notices the recognition in her eyes and quickly shuts the door. He reveals his plan to frame Bobby as the real killer and intends to use Jess as his source of information. Eric explains that on the night of the incident, he lost Amanda, whom he loved, as she was planning to leave Mitch. He seeks revenge for her. In a desperate move, Jess goes live on social media and exposes Eric's face on video. Enraged, Eric hurls his axe at her, narrowly missing. They manage to escape and hide outside the room while Jack inflates the giant duck balloon with gas. As they attempt to flee in the car, Eric hooks it to prevent their escape. Jessica shoots at the balloon, causing it to ignite and burn Eric down. Jess and Bobby flee in a truck. Following the ordeal, the police declare that everything is incinerated, and Jess returns home with Ryan. However, Jess continues to suffer from nightmares of the killer. And with this the movie comes to an end. Thanks for tuning in guys.